This is a Talaria Sting MX-5. And we're doing the unboxing right now. We'll get that out. We could like cut like right around here, like this piece, and we no, could okay. just go ahead. Slice that up. Or should we slice the one back here so we can just drag it out that way? That could work too. Okay. That is cool. That is so cool. It just it just popped up. I know. See, it's meant to. You just put it on the tabs, and that was one of the things on the new one. It pops off. Okay. I mean, there's no circuit breaker. There's no circuit breaker. Wait. Do these not need a circuit breaker? Oh, I like how these are on the top. It's another nice change. The top of it. There we go. Okay, so it's been all unboxed, and man, we've spent a, a lot of time on it, and so, why not we give you the 411 on everything that's happened so far with it. Okay, well this bike, it came, it had a bent rotor, so Luna's going to get us a new rotor, and they're different, a normal front rotor off a regular um, Sting 4 won't work. These forks are about a half inch wider and so they have a different spacing, which is good because if you've ever tried different tires, you always have to be so careful that they don't rub right there where your fork seals are, where your forks enlarge there. And now you have more room. So I took from a spare Telaria wheel we had, I took the back rotor off, which is the same bolt spacing and size as the front ones are now. And I put that on it. There's still two 20 millimeter rotors. It's not as thick, but it, and the braking surface is only like three quarters of an inch instead of one inch, but it'll be good enough to try it out. And um, the front wheel and the back wheel, basically the hubs and the whole setup other than the rotors are a little different, are the same as like a Apollo RFN or a Beta Explorer, Kashin's Beta Explorer, they look identical. And they had a little wider, you know, between the forks, you know, the axle there was a little wider. Because I even tried putting a regular, like Suron, Telaria Mark III, Mark IV front wheel, and you would need bigger spacers because, you know, it, it was almost a half inch. So these are really heavy duty. Um, you should never have a problem with them. The nice thing, of the difference, these are 220, where the rotors, even though these look to be the same thickness, these rotors are 220, where on a Beta Explorer, they're only 203 millimeters. So they're bigger, that's really nice brakes. They have the lines heavy duty. Other than that, it looks like most things are gonna fit. You're gonna be able to use the same tires, the headlight bracket, um, you know, if you want to switch, I'm switching out. The regular um, direct mount handlebar stem, just like with Warp 9 or however you, you know, will go right on. The key switch is the same as a, you know, Mark IV. If you want to switch over to the cover and one of those new anodized covers, 
the cover is the same. The chain is a 428 instead of a 420. So it's going to be a little heavier, but I don't think that is really a bad thing because it won't stretch as easy. You won't have to adjust it all the time, especially with the extra power. But that's where some of the weight is in the brakes and the brake lines and the wheels and rims and spokes are definitely heavier duty. So, um, you know, people will probably play with that later. Looks like the suspension is the same in the linkage. I have one of the new Voncat 2.0 shocks that I'm gonna run on it and um, everything looks the same there. So basically it's a Mark IV with a little bit different spacing and a different little different fork and different wheels and chain and then your battery. Um, what's funny is it's it's pretty much the same height as Shane Suron, his shy battery, his 60 volt, what is yours, a 51 amp? 51 amp. And 60 volt. And so there, this new 72 that comes on it is the same height. One thing that is slick is the new lid. And instead of where it tilted up, now it tilts up and it just goes under like that. So when you want to take it off, you tilt it like that and it, the whole thing just comes off super quick. And then you don't have any lid at all to be in the way when you want to pull the battery. Also, there's no um, breaker switch in these. I don't know if it's built in, but there is no breaker switch. So I don't know if they put it in with your, your on switch um, on the handlebar. There is an extra, instead of two, cables going to the your main plug it's got three now and so now you don't have to mess with that anymore so that's going to be pretty cool um, so but the frame and everything the swing arm looks just like a regular mark four the fenders the seat so anything you could do on a mark four you can do on this um, so it's like they really did um, you know, make some good changes where they took an already good handling, um, good feeling bike, and made those few changes to just give it a little more strength and with the power, can't wait to ride it. And um, the tires, they're junk, but it's good enough to try out. But other than that, um, so you can still run your warp nine bars and it's not, it doesn't look to be any taller. Somebody said it was, well, the forks were longer. I don't think so. They might be wider, but it still has 220 millimeters of travel, and that's what a Mark IV has. So the Mark V and IV are the same, but all in all, the changes and everything, they didn't try to reinvent the wheel. They just, you know, did some really good work, like they were doing some good R&D on these, and I can't wait to ride it. Okay, well, two hip, gotta go. Well, that's going to be it video for today, so I've got to go edit this real quick. So if you enjoyed this video, why not consider giving it a thumbs up? If you've been enjoying the content so far, why not consider to subscribe, and we'll see you later, amigos.